Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about the Antichrist or the False Prophet. In this video, I'm going to go down through some scripture and I'm going to show you how the Antichrist or the Lawless One is to be identified. Some of the traits that you will look for, some of the timing on when he is to appear and what he will do when he actually shows up. You may have to watch this video twice because it has a wealth of information in it. And some of the points discussed early will turn out to be more important to you as we get toward the end of the video. Leave comments as we go. And if you would, go ahead and hit that like button now because it's easier to remember to do it now than it is to remember to do it later. And consider subscribing to our channel if you like this type of content. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to go down through the book called The Apocalypse of Elijah and I'm going to look for hints and clues as to who the false prophet is or who the Antichrist is um, out of that book. But before I do so, I do want to point something out in the King James Version of their Bible and that's how the false prophet and the Antichrist are not the same thing. Uh, when you come over here and you look at the um, epistle of John, that's pretty much the only times you see the word Antichrist written in the Bible. Anytime you're written in the Apocrypha, anytime it's written in the any anytime you see Antichrist, the only time you see them is in First John and Second John. And when you look and you read the word Antichrist in First John and Second John, it's telling you that the Antichrist was already in, uh, already on the scene, even back there when John was there. You see right here in verse two and eighteen. He says, little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist should come, even now are there many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. When you come over here in 2 and 22, he says, who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Okay, so the, the Antichrist is not really who we're looking for, guys. Um, it's, uh, it's a common misunderstanding in the churches. There are a lot of people who are repeating one another. I call it parakeeting is to just say what they've heard other people say. But when you do your own study and you look at Antichrist, you find out that this was an individual that came a while back. It is a spirit of a man that has been around for for a while. And we see right here in, I think this is second epistle of John, it says, every spirit that confesses not that Jesus is come in the flesh is not of God and is that spirit of the Antichrist. And I will point out that the word spirit, when you look in your Bible, Bible, you will find it in italics that spirit of uh, is in italics so what it's saying is anybody who does not say that Christ came in the flesh is the Antichrist but when you look over in the other books like Daniel chapter 8 and in the apocalypse of Elijah that I'm going to talk about and when you look in the book of Revelation and everywhere else that you can look for scriptural documents about this sinister God that's supposed to come in at end times and call all of this trouble. He's not called the Antichrist. He's called the lawless one. He's called the false prophet. He's called a lot of other different things. And so my argument here is that the Antichrist and the false prophet is not the same thing. Not to take anything away from the Antichrist. He's his own guy. But that's not really who we're looking for. And I think it, and I bring it up because I believe it can cloud the issue a little bit. It can muddy the waters when you're looking for the Antichrist because the word Antichrist only means that it denies that the uh, Messiah came in the flesh. So there could be people out here that are doing all of these miraculous things that the false prophet is going to do or the lawless one is going to do in the end times but yet he can be saying yeah I believe in Jesus I, I believe Jesus came in the flesh so that will be a little bit confusing and I don't think that the scripture intended for it to be that confusing it didn't mean for us to um, lump everything together like it was a bad Eddie Murphy movie and say that the Antichrist plays every role he does not he plays his role but then you have other people that comes in like the lawless one like the false prophet like the beast and I like the whole bunch of other you know players in this this end time scenario all right so I just wanted to point that out as a little bit of a side note but what I'm gonna do now like I said I was I'm gonna run through the apocalypse of Elijah and look for hints as to who is the Antichrist 
Okay, we're coming down here to verse 10, and he describes this dude as the lawless one here. Now, we're not ready to say who the lawless one is just yet. We're going to need a little bit more um, evidence, and I believe we're going to find that in the apocalypse of Elijah. But verse 10 says, Neither will the son of lawlessness prevail over them, nor will the thrones hinder them, but they will walk with the angels up in my city. And this is talking about those who will get the seal in their forehead. You read up here talking about this seal that they're going to get. And it's talking about uh, thrones and crowns. Okay, now down, down here in verse 13, he says, Hear, O wise men of the land, concerning the deceivers who will multiply in the last times, so that they will set down for themselves doctrines which do not belong to God, setting aside the law of God, those who have made their belly their God, saying, The fast does not exist, nor did God create it, making themselves strangers to the covenant of God, and robbing themselves of the glorious promises. Okay, now this is a mouthful in this verse here, but there are several hints included in this verse 13. One, okay, he, he, he's talking to the wise individuals here, but he's talking about the deceivers who will multiply in the last times. Okay, deceivers multiplying in the last times, but if you notice what they, what it is that they're doing, one way you can identify these guys that are deceiving in the last times, he says, set down for themselves doctrine which do not belong to God. And what this is talking about is the word of God and how there are individuals out here, a lot of individuals out here who are uh, talking against the scripture, talking against the word of God, saying how it's not necessary, how we're not supposed to be obeying the Mosaic laws, or we're not supposed to be paying attention to um, the covenants and, you know, the commandments, statutes, precepts, ordinances, and all of these rule after rule that we get over there in the scripture. These guys have set aside this law. They've put it aside. Some of the things that they say is that the law is not um, valid for nowadays that like we're not supposed to be keeping it like it was antiquated and for those guys way back and then um, and so this is one of the things and how you will notice them as deceivers of this time it says that they have made their belly their God and basically doing whatever they want to do and then but notice right here he's saying saying that the fast does not exist nor did God create it now this is important here because what this is alluding to is the feast of atonement there is one day that the father set aside it is the tenth day of the seventh holy month that we are supposed to fast and that is a holy day is called atonement day and so that's what this is talking about these guys who have set aside the law of God and and made their belly their God they go on to say that you're not supposed to keep the feast you know they tell you that you're not supposed to keep the feast at all they they you know um, tell you that you know we don't do things like Passover, unleavened bread, Pentecost, tabernacles, memorial, but blowing of trumpets, and I think there's one or two more um, other feasts that we're not supposed to mind. Well, that's what it's talking about right here. So you can recognize these deceivers in the end times as being these people who tell you that you're not supposed to keep these holy convocations. And you can read over there in Leviticus 23 about these holy convocations and how important they are. And so when you think about anybody. It tells you that you're not supposed to be keeping those feasts. It should be really clear that those guys are a deceiver. And one thing about these feasts, um, just to let you know how important they are here in today's time, is the observance of these feasts or the lack thereof is tied to plagues. Guys, you can see that over in Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 18. And you can also see that over in the book of Jubilees, how the feast days and keeping the feast days prevents us from getting plagues. And so with all of this coronavirus going around, it's part way because of the efforts of these lawless ones that so many people are sick around the world today. The father put these feast days here. He expected us to keep these feast days and promised us that if we were to keep the feast days, then we wouldn't get things like coronaviruses. But yet, you know, you see so many people around the world getting sick for this virus. And then, you know, we stand back and we wonder why. And then notice this part right here where it says making themselves strangers to the covenant of God. 
Now, the covenant that he's talking about, you can read about that over in Exodus chapter 20 uh, through chapter 23. That's four chapters, which is called the Book of the Covenant. This is actually the current covenant that mankind is in. We're still awaiting the new covenant, which will have the laws written on our hearts. And that's how we know that we're not in the new covenant because the laws are not yet written on our hearts. In fact, many of us are still debating whether we should be keeping those laws at all. Um, that's going to change sometime in the future. But you notice right here, it's saying that the lawless ones, these ones who reject the law, will make themselves strangers to that covenant, robbing themselves of the glorious promises. And this is what you have a lot going on nowadays is, you know, people are... Um, not really aware of the promises of the father you know how we have the opportunity to actually survive the tribulation and inherit the earth um to go on to be like noah you know where we would actually repopulate the earth um living in a time when there's no illnesses no diseases no wickedness even satan will be locked up um we don't have to worry about death and all of those kind of things those are the promises of the scripture but there's a lot of individuals who have made themselves strangers to that covenant and thereby they are robbing themselves of those promises but now is this talking about the lawless one directly um, in a way because it is of this group that the lawless one will be manifested um, he'll come out of this group he'll be one of these people who are rejecting the covenant he'll be one of these people who is robbing themselves of the promises he'll be one of these people who has their belly as their God as talked about here and this will be one of the ways that you'll be able to identify that lawless one even though he'll have a lot of popularity you know he will be rejecting the covenant he'll be rejecting the scripture all right now here's something right here it says and a king who will be called the king of peace will rise up in the west he will run up on this sea like a lot like a roaring lion okay so here we're talking about a king who will be called the king of peace and this is a why a lot of individuals started labeling uh, president obama as the um uh, false prophet they call him the antichrist but i believe i made that point earlier is that you can't really go you really can't use the word antichrist because it doesn't fit and you know because if you go up and you ask president obama right now and today if jesus christ came in the flesh i'm 99.9 .9 percent sure he's going to say absolutely jesus christ came in the flesh but does that mean that he is not the false prophet or not the lawless one or not even this king that is being talked about here no it doesn't fit remember antichrist was only used four times in the scripture and it was talking about individuals that lived all the way Way back there in John's time the individual that we're looking for now um, probably won't be an antichrist you know everybody about it by now everybody believes that Jesus came in the flesh but and so it's not a characteristic of um, of the antichrist unless you want to say he's of another religion um, and that's why a lot of people do they say he must be a Muslim or he must be you know somebody some other religion like they say that Jewish people don't believe that Jesus came in the flesh that he must be Jewish or he must be um, Muslim or something like that but now talking about this king here and this is important to um, understand uh, as much as we can about this king here it says that it's going to rise up in the West, pointing again to uh, the United States of America or someone over there opposed to the East. And he will run up on the sea like a roaring lion, again, pointing to America. When you put those three things together, yeah, you know, uh, uh, sorry, Obama, it kind of looks like you because you fit all three of them when it comes to the king of peace uh, who will rise up in the, in the West and will run up on the sea like a roaring lion because of the, all of the military might because of the power of the US Navy but now while I'm talking about President Obama I might as well throw this part in how this Bulgarian prophet had predicted that the 44th president would be the last president that the United States would ever have that you know implying that 
or I think she might have said it directly that the United States would be reduced to a third world country and that the 44th president would lead the way uh, to to that destruction and Barack Obama being in his 44th presidency was one of the main reasons why you know they labeled him as the Antichrist or as the false prophet or and thinking that he was going to destroy America you might have remembered all of those you know bad things they said about him while he was the president and it was kinda like everybody was surprised that we even got another president after Barack Obama because you know everybody was for sure that the 44th president of the United States would be the last president. Now here's one website, I haven't looked at it, but it seems to be going to explain how Obama was not the 44th president at all. He was in the 44th presidency, but he was only the 43rd president because there was one president, uh, Grover Cleveland, you can look him up, that actually was counted twice. Uh, Grover Cleveland was actually counted twice. He's the only president that was counted twice. You can look him up. The reason why he was counted twice was because his two presidencies were split. Um, he was the only president who was president for four years and then lost re-election and had to sit out for four years and then ran for president again uh, and one he's the only president that ever done that and he has been counted twice which means that Donald Trump is actually the 44th president predicted to be the last president that the United States will ever have okay so you don't want to pick on President Obama too much you don't want to exclude President Trump because he also fits all of this when you think about how he is creating a peace deal with the Middle East over there if that actually goes through and he creates a Middle Eastern peace deal yeah he will be really the king of peace and again on the West and he uh, he, again, he's rising up in the West and he will run up on the sea with a roaring lion because he does have this military might. Looking at verse 6 and verse 8, I think we can pretty much narrow it down to an American president. Of course, the word king kind of throws everything off a little bit. But, you know, it, 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 it does seem to point to one of these guys, not necessarily as the false prophet, not as the Antichrist I use incorrectly, but it is when we're talking about this king here. And you're going to see why I keep making a difference here in a minute. There's one verse that separates the two. It's like the false prophet comes out of the king or separates himself from the king. We'll see that in a second. Okay, now look at this part right here. It, it will come to pass in those days that he will command a peace and a vain gift in Egypt. He will give peace to those who are holy, saying that the name of God is one. He will give honors to the saints and exalt in the places of the saints. Now, you know, I think we're, we're kind of... Uh, getting away from Obama here and starting to look a little bit more like Trump because of you know the stuff he's talking about here uh, they gave Obama the um, the um, the peace award the Nobel Peace Prize or something like that for peace but you know it is Trump that is a commanding peace he's actually going to command peace with his peace deal I think he told the Palestinians or you know or Mahmoud Abbas and them guys take it or leave it you know what I'm saying you either uh, get on board with this, this agreement or it's going to be your last chance or something like that he told him and then you look at this part right here he says and a vain gift in Egypt not sure what that is but then right here he says he will give peace to those who are holy um, this to me sounds like the Jewish community over there saying that the name of God is one and he will give honors to the saints and exalt in the places of the saints it sounds like Jerusalem there and you know is this pointing to our beloved president Trump um, I don't know Let's, let's, let's continue to look for some hints okay now this over here um, this kind of lines up with what we see in the uh, New Testament where it's talking about peace and safety you see right here it says peace and joy exists he says but when you hear peace and joy 
but let's come over and look at it over here when we come over here and we see peace and safety it says for when they shall say peace and safety then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape so and that's what I believe it's referring to over there is when it talks about peace and joy um, we know that it's what those dot dot dots are pointing to sudden destruction over there <clears throat> okay still talking about this king but down here in verse 17 he says now I will tell you his signs so that you might know him for he has two sons one on his right and one on his left so it's talking about these two sons of this king here it says one on his right will receive a demonic face and he will fight against the name of God now Obama has two daughters he doesn't have any sons and I don't know much about Donald Trump's sons if you do and any of this fits would you please put it down in the comment section I don't know much about his sons at all so let's go on now you come down here to this verse 40 he says then when you hear that there is security in Jerusalem tear your garments O priests of the land because the son of perdition will soon come and that's another name for this dude that we're looking for the son of perdition like I said several times Antichrist don't really fit but the son of perdition really does um, the lawless one um, right here in verse 41 he says in those days the lawless one appear in the holy places now it's talking about you know these wars that's going over there and on over there in the Middle East maybe it's talking about how the kings of Persia will fight against the kings of Assyria and this is what you know those wars are going on now you know when you think about you know what's going on over there all right now this is what this is why we can't really say that that king is the uh, false prophet because when you look right here he says in the fourth year of that king the son of lawlessness will appear saying I am the Christ although he is not don't believe him now here is when we really need to try to make the distinction on who we're talking about because it's a bit confusing using the word king nowhere in the scripture is any government leader ever called a president or a minister or a czar or any of the common words that we use to describe a government leader they're always called a king and so that's why it's easy for us to associate with the president of the United States as the king of the United States the Bible never calls him by any other name and then we see that this king is supposed to come out of the West and of course the United States North America is in the West but the reason why I'm doing this edit here in uh, June of 2020 is because of this new king of England that you guys may have heard about Joseph Gregory Hallett who um, is worth some investigation when we're looking into the individuals who are being discussed in this video let me just leave it like that um, I don't want to make any predictions or anything like that this is kind of just an investigative study you know maybe you know sharing some ideas with with you know the congregation you know on who this guy could be but we definitely should add him to the discussion let me just leave it like that so you have this king that is doing all of this stuff that we've seen before making these worthless gifts and you know doing this stuff with the temple and with the priests and such but then over here you have um, another individual that comes that says that I am the Christ which appears to be different from that king so that king could have well very well have been Obama or Trump or somebody because like I said it was did arise in the West and he did roll across the sea uh, uh, like a lion and did some other things that sounds like an American king but down here um, is saying what does it say again he says the son of lawlessness will appear 
in the fourth year that king, the son of lawlessness will appear. Uh, and he's going to say that I am the Christ. But he's telling you how to recognize that the, the who did Christ really is. And this is the same thing we hear over in the King James Version when it talks about here in verse 2. He says, when the Christ comes, he will come in a manner of a covey of doves with the crowns of doves surrounding him. And he will walk upon the heavens vaults with the signs of the cross leading him. The whole world behold, will behold him like the sun which shines from the eastern horizon to the western. This is how he will come and with all of his angels surrounding him. So that's exactly how we know that the second coming will take place um, from the King James Version. And so that's how it's telling us that you will recognize that the lawless one is not him. Verse 5 says, But the son of lawlessness will begin to stand again in the holy places. And so that's talking about the abomination of desolation as you have this lawless one standing in the holy places, talking about over there in Jerusalem. And he will say to the sun, Fall, and it will fall. He will say, Shine, and it will do it. He's talking about these powers. Again, all of this is you. you it's basically mirroring what you read over there in Revelations and in the book of Matthew, how this lawless one is going to have all of these powers, how this false prophet is going to be able to do all of these wonders. And here are some of the specifics of the wonders that he's going to be able to do. He's going to be able to command the sun. He's going to be able to uh, command the moon. If that is not going to seduce people, I don't know what will. He will walk upon the sea and the rivers as upon dry land. So he's going to be able to uh, walk on water. And he says he will make the lame walk, the deaf hear, the dumb to speak, the blind to see. He will cleanse lepers and he will um, heal the ill. Now, these seem like superpowers to us now. Um, but they're really not. We all have these abilities and these powers. Um, now it's just that we don't know how to take advantage of them. We don't know how to control our thoughts. We don't even know how to pray, believe it or not. And so that's what this is talking about. This individual here, this lawless one, is going to be able to take advantage of the gifts that the Father has given us. And that's why it's going to surprise a lot of people. Because, you know, when he start making the deaf to hear or the dumb to speak or the blind, to see when we're not really used to that even though the Messiah basically demonstrated for us that we have that uh, that power when we see it firsthand coming from this individual it's going to seduce a lot of people a lot of people are going to be tricked he says you're going to be casting out demons we do have that ability now guys he says he will multiply his signs and his wonders in the presence of everyone again this is not the king you know, this is not Obama or Trump or whoever the king it is. This is somebody who came in the fourth year of the king. He would do the works which the Christ did except for raising the dead alone. And so he won't be able to raise the dead bodies. And that's going to be pretty much the only way that people are not going to know. Or that's going to be the only way that people are going to know that he is not the second coming of the Messiah. Is because he won't be able to bring the dead back to life. But who knows that? Who, who, unless you're reading the scripture, unless you're reading, you know, the apocalypse of, Eli of Elijah, who knows that that's that he that that's going to be the, the way to tell. There are going to be a lot of people seduced by this lawless one. In this, you will know that he is the son of lawlessness because he is unable to give life. OK, now I'm looking at this down here and verse 15 Um. It looked like they added a, they took out a few more words. I got my hard copy over here and um, it gives a little bit more detail. So I better jump over there and look at it right quick. Because although over here it says that he is a little pellet. He is a little pellet tall. And then it has that dot, dot, dot after it. Um, if I were to, if, just to show you what it looks like over here, it kind of looks like this. That's what that's what my hard copy book says. It even has um, like a bar across the E to I guess saying that that E is long, like pelik, 
or something like that. Well, let me take that back out. He says he is a little pellet tall of a... S and he says, let me read it out of this book over here. Thin-legged with a tuft of gray hair on his forehead. Yep. Then it goes on to talk about he, um, his eyebrows reach to his ears and he has leprous bare spot on the front of his hands. Um, yeah, that's consistent with what the hard copy says over here. I don't know how they left out that part about him being a little pellet tall. Um, it, it always makes me, you know, when I look at both of these translations, it, it doesn't it doesn't appear to be like the Dead Sea Scrolls where it was just mostly fragments or whatever. This appears to be like somebody took words out. You know, like people just took, you know, whole portions of this book out to deceive, uh, talking about the apocalypse of Elijah. One day somebody going to raid the Vatican and find the, the real copy of it, I believe. But let's go on. Says he will transform himself in the presence of those who seek him. He will become a young child. He will become old. He will transform himself in every sign, but the signs of his head will not be able to change. Therein you will know that he is the son of lawlessness. Now, this, I'm wondering if it's talking about how when it says that he's going to change and make himself young make himself old but you know you'll st you'll still have an image of him on the screen you know because you know you'll be looking at the, the image of this dude and you know he's still going to look like the same person his head features will still be looking like the same person however he may you know act like a child or something like that you see right here so it's talking about the uh, lawless one a lot in this this book and you can see all of the time that it's mentioned the lawless one but it says oh son of lawlessness saying that I am the Christ so the lawless one is going to say that he is the Christ but we'll know that he's not because he's not able to raise the dead even though he's going to be able to do a lot of signs woe to us because we listen to you this is talking about the mass majority of people who's going to go for, you know, his trickery. And, you know, when you think of how much trickery he's going to be able to do, I mean, golly, he's going to be able to do a lot of stuff. So let's summarize what we have so far. We have the willful king who is a king in the West. More than likely the president of the United States which is still the most powerful nation in the world right now. Now, we talked about whether it could be President Obama as this willful king, but I think it should be easy to understand that he's not a true candidate for the willful king because he's a past tense president. And, and even though he may be more popular than Donald Trump, there's no way people are going to want to go back to a past tense president in order to help us through new tribulations. And plus, there's no way he can become king again. And as far as our king is concerned and his relationship to the Antichrist, which I use incorrectly, you know, I'll probably still use that word from time to time. But this lawless one that we're expecting to come here in the end times. You see right here, according to the book called The Apocalypse of Elijah, the lawless one comes in the fourth year of the willful king. Now, this further excludes Obama from a candidate from being the king because Obama's fourth year is over and done. He's made it through all of his eight years and he is now retired from the presidency. And so it is sometime in that year, the year 2020, the year 2021, we can expect the lawless one to appear. If in fact our current president is this king talked about here it is during that year that we can expect to see the appearance of this lawless one saying that he is the Christ
and one of the reasons why we wanted to do this video is for right here when you see this don't believe him when you see this man coming saying that he is the Christ don't believe him so I believe that narrows down the choices that we have for the king but we remember that it's not necessarily the king that we're looking for it is the lawless one now in my opinion there are a lot of candidates for the lawless one you could probably run down the list of about a dozen people who you would think could turn out to be this lawless one including the Pope but what I'm going to show you here next is a edited version of a video that I'm getting from this channel right here called T-Bird Lauderdale uh, she did a video called the rabbit hole and the new king of England uh, her video is about 32 minutes long but I have cut out a lot of the fluff that she has in her video and here I'm going to present you with some of the highlights of the things that she said in her video she is one of the first people that that went public with the information she found on this new king when you do a search in YouTube for videos on this new king that she's talking about Joseph Gregory Hallett she is one of the oldest videos that you will see posted and she has a wealth of information in the video that she posted she was also contacted by this Joseph Gregory Hallett um, and given kudos from this new king himself which I think adds a lot of credibility to what she's saying in this video and so I'm gonna play about five or six minutes of what she said again I, I've taken out a lot of the fluff out of what she said but I'm going to link it all over the place probably in the description in the comments and even probably as an end screen into this video so you can go in and check out her video for yourself to let you know that I'm not trying to distort anything on what she says but you know I just took it out a lot of the personal information that she gave and you know some of the crying that she did and some of the other stuff so if so and just bring it out some of the key points about this king that she's talking about all right guys I'm going to uh, let you listen to it please give comments as you go Hello YouTubers, I'm so glad that you're here joining uh, me today again. It's Raven Moonstone. Most of the stuff I'm uh, going to show you has been verified through numerous sources, verified by declassified files, government docs, uh, anonymous hacks. I didn't do the hacks. People love me. They share them with me. Uh, WikiLeaks and many QAnons out there fighting together. One rabbit hole, one right after another. I'm going to explain how this is going to help us just be free. The other thing I'm going to tell you is this person here had four daughters. One was his mother one is Angela Merkel, the other one is Theresa May, and the other one's the Princess of Lithuania. Are you crapping your pants now? Because I certainly was. And I'm like, wow, these people are all related, they all come from the same bloodline, and they all do the same thing. What are they hiding from us? What are they hiding from us? I'll tell you the most amazing thing I discovered what they're hiding us from. You guys all ready? Are you ready now? Okay. We have a new king. How do I know this? This I'll introduce you to. It's actually, I think it's April 6th. I'm not sure of the dates. So I'll have to get that corrected. 
So, Joseph Gregory Hallett, King John III, is now our new King of England, King of Scotland, King of Northern Ireland, Prince of Wales, King of Great Britain, King of United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, King of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and all of Ireland, King of New Zealand, Australia, Canada, and the Commonwealth of Nations, and the titular Prince Regent Duke, Governor of North America. A statement of claim was made on April 5th. And these are all the people who were notified. Elizabeth, Charles, Philip, Camilla, Edward, Richard, Edward, Archbishop of Canterbury, PM of the United Kingdom, Boris, PM of Russia, Putin, PM of or President of the United States, Donald Trump. They all support, got the declaration saying that basically the Queen is illegitimate conception stemming from the illegitimate conception of King George the Fifth. Through all of these documents, which you can find on theking.com, it breaks down the lineage, okay? What it basically boils down to is says that Queen Anne Boleyn's avoided her uh, 1536 execution in the Tower of London. They did not, she didn't die. She did not die, you people. Okay? Queen Anne Boleyn's grandson, Sir Walter Raleigh, was born with the title of Christ and earned the title of Christ in July 1596, 1609 to 1610. You heard me right. Christ. Guess who that leads to? Joseph Gregory Hallett was born on Rosh Hush. The, uh, I'm going to screw that up. I'll let you read it. Christ, Messiah, pulled from the sword, the stone, ki joined kingdoms, joined times, reinvigorating England's royal, royal, holy grail lineage, Christian mystery lineage, inherited the title of Christ off his great ten times grandfather, Walter Raleigh, certifying title of Christ, therefore automatically King of England. Anne Boleyn, Sir Walter Raleigh, ten times grand. Okay, so you got all this. It's been confirmed. The Queen and the Pope certified that the execution was faked and both bred posthumously, resulting in G. Hallett, the main S.Y.Y. King of England. We have a new king! We can confirm. April 1st, 2020, Joseph Gregory Hallett delivered certified legal documents to Queenie to Pope Francis and 10 others. April 10th, Pope Francis announces Joseph Gregory H. Christ on Easter Friday. True story. Go watch it. I did. All right. So I hope, this, hope you got something out of it. I hope this at least adds a few pieces to this huge puzzle we're trying to put together on who this guy is or who these guys are. If you got anything out of it, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. Leave a comment. You know, if you got anything, you can add any other evidence. It's good to try to leave links down there so we can, you know, maybe follow up and see some other stuff on, you know, we can put this stuff together. All right. Talk to you later. Shalom.